all the time. God is good. Right now, with the same spirit, why don't you invite the Holy Ghost to come and do any of this tonight? Invite the Holy Spirit. Invite the Holy Spirit. Our team is Holy Spirit. So we need a spirit of the living God. Pray, oh God. To come and dwell May in our come and dwell in our midst, Holy Spirit. May your presence come and fill this place, Spirit of a living God. We thank you. time the program is the spirit holy ghost revival center my favorite favorite base i'm coming back home i believe it's going to be very powerful it is the spirit that quickens the flesh profits nothing and the words that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life these are the unforgettable words of jesus christ let me see you there as the power of the Holy Ghost comes upon us. Amen. Today, I brought myself. I am the sacrifice. I have more than a song. Today, I brought myself. I am your worship. Hello, my name is Eastwood Anaba. Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Here we come again. And this time the program is The Spirit. Holy Ghost Revival Center. My favorite, favorite base. I'm coming back home. I believe it's going to be very powerful. It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. And the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. These are the unforgettable words of Jesus Christ. Let me see you there as the power of the Holy Ghost comes upon us. Amen. Today, I brought myself. I am the sacrifice. I have more than a song. Today, I brought myself. I am your worship, Lord, receive. Hello, my name is Eastwood Anaba. Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Here we come again. And this time the program is The Spirit. Holy Ghost Revival Center. My favorite, favorite base. I'm coming back home. I believe it's going to be very powerful. It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. And the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. These are the unforgettable words of Jesus Christ. Let me see you there as the power of the Holy Ghost comes upon us. Amen. Today, I brought myself. I am the sacrifice. I have more than a song Today I brought myself I am your worship Lord, receive Hello, my name is Eastwood Anaba Amsterdam The Netherlands 
Here we come again. And this time the program is The Spirit. Holy Ghost Revival Center. My favorite, favorite base. I'm coming back home. I believe it's going to be very powerful. It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. And the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. These are the unforgettable words of Jesus Christ. Let me see you there as the power of the Holy Ghost comes upon us. Amen. Today, I brought myself. I am the sacrifice. I have more than a song. Today, I brought myself. I am your worship. Like you, oh, you never change. You never 
For your throne to reverence and worship unto you, King of Glory. None to be compared unto you. I am that I am, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. You are a righteous and redeeming God, and there's none to be compared unto you. Here we are to worship, and here we are to bow down before your throne, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We declare your majesty. And we proclaim that your name is exalted. For you reign magnificently rule victoriously. 
your power shows throughout the earth. We declare, declare your majesty. Lord, we proclaim, we proclaim that your name is exalted.
We thank God for this beautiful time in his presence. And also our instrumentalists for leading and ushering us into an absolute worship time with our God. Praise the Lord. It's a blessing to be here this evening. The second day of our spirit-filled conference that we have seen the spirit. And it is God in his power and in his might and in his spirit. He has brought all of us from different countries and nations to come here, to come and be filled with his spirit. So we are not here by accident, but we have been here, we have come here only because God has ordained it to be so. If you believe this, why don't you give Jesus a mighty clap offering? Hallelujah. We thank God also for this time. We can't stop thanking him because everything here belongs to him. And everything that we are doing, we are committing into his hands. Hallelujah. Shall we please be still in the presence of the almighty God? People of God, on behalf of the leadership of Holy Ghost Revival Chapel International... We want to welcome each and every one present here this evening into the presence of the Almighty God. We know that you are here for a purpose, and we believe that by his grace, that purpose will be fulfilled and be met by the time you get to your various homes. So just prepare your hearts, prepare your minds, and come and receive what God has for all of us this evening. Amen. Before we go further, we have... A special presentation. Also, the praises and worship will come to lead us, but we want to take our first offering. And we know that there is blessing in giving than in receiving. So I want all of us to take out a good seed and knowing that as we give unto God, we glorify his name. So let us, everyone here, take out something good to bless the Lord with. And we will invite the voice of power again as it come to lead us in this offering. Put your hands together for the voice of power. Shall we please be on our feet in the house of the Lord? Let us pray. Let us pray. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus as we bring our seed, that it may be a blessing, O oh God. Let it rise up to thy kingdom, O oh God, and may it be used for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I 
trust but not trust Persecuted by the devil Rest up but not destroyed I, I want to see a people of God That are here to celebrate God's goodness So joy Don't worry about the gospel Don't worry about the gospel Yeah. 
He said the mighty God, an Igwe God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So we are not yet done. So long as we are here on this earth, we will continue to lift our hands and praise our God. Hallelujah. We will never get tired of praising him. Amen. Amen. So we still have a song ministration. Like I said, we will keep praising and praising our God. So putting your hands together, let us welcome back onto the podium the voice of power as they come to give us a special song ministration. Keep clapping for them as they come back. Hallelujah. Only I know what you've done for me. No one knows but me. I'm the only one who can testify of your greatness, of your goodness. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun till it's going down. Your faithfulness is sure. Your mercy is ever new. From the rising of the sun till it's going down. Your faithfulness is sure. Your mercy is ever new. From the rising the rising of the sun till it's going down your faithfulness, your faithfulness. What you've done for me That's why I praise you the way I do No one knows Like I know What you've done for me That's why I praise you the way I do Your favor your favor surrounds me like a shield Your love amazes me Your grace Say your favor Your love amazes me Amazes me, Lord. Your love 
lifted me up from the merry clay <laughs> and set my feet on the rock to stand. Ha, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, and I will dance, it won't be enough. And I will shout, it won't be enough. But yes, so would I praise you? Hey, because you are God, and that's why. that hospital room and you were shaking your head and you knew it had to be God to bring about the difference. When you were in that exam room and you were trembling, but when the results came, you knew it had to be God. No one knows. So praise him the way you want and love him the way you want because it's only you who know. Hallelujah. We want to continue with today's conference, but before we go on, we would like to acknowledge special men and women of God who have come today and in their own way, they are all contributing 
in shepherding, shepherding um, God's flock here in Amsterdam and beyond, and also helping to raise the banner of Christ everywhere they go. So without wasting much time, people of God, I would like you to put your hands together as I welcome these special people in today's conference. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will start by welcoming our own very pastor, a pastor who has been with us and who has been discharging God's duties to the best of his abilities. Put your hands together for our very own Pastor James. <laughs> pastor James, God bless you. And may he continue to make you great and increase you. Hallelujah. I would also like to acknowledge the presence of a special woman here in our ministry. She's a blessing to all of us, not only the women. She inspires us in her own special way. And she's a role model for all of us over here. People of God, why don't you put your hands together as we acknowledge the backbone of the head of this ministry. Mrs. Josephine Ohuswajiman, please put your hands together for her. God bless you, woman of God. And may he continue to use you mightily in his ministry wherever you go. Hallelujah. We will also like to make a special mention of Reverend George Fiao. Reverend George, if you're here, if you could please, with all humility, be on your feet. People of God, why don't you put your hands together for him? God bless you, and may his anointing over you be great. Hallelujah. We would also like to acknowledge the presence of Reverend Jolly. Reverend Jolly, please put your hands together for him. God bless you, man of God, and may he continue to guide and lead you. Hallelujah. We would also like to acknowledge another powerful man of God. His name is Prophet Percy. Prophet Percy, if you're here, oh, put your hands together for Prophet Percy. God bless you, man of God, and may the light of God shine over you wherever you go. Hallelujah. We will also like to acknowledge, last but certainly not the least, Minister Daniel Downer. Minister Daniel Downer. Oh, put your hands together for him. God bless you, Minister of God, and thank you for continuing for carrying the flag of Christ. Hallelujah. So, before we also go on, we have a reminder concerning tomorrow's conference. As we know, today is the second day. We started with full vim yesterday, but each and every day, God continues to do great and mighty things. So, tomorrow, by the grace of God, there will be a double service. And if I were you, I will be here for both services because the Spirit is going to work miracles and wonders. So we'll be having our normal church service tomorrow, and after that, we'll be having a special anointing service that will be in the evening. So please come together with your family, come with your friends, come and let us end this conference with a prophetic anointing from the great man of God. You'll be glad you came, and you will remember tomorrow for a very long time. Hallelujah! Are you excited to be here today? You need to be. In these times, we need the Spirit more than ever before. Hallelujah. And with that same Spirit, we will continue to invite the voice of power as they lift up the name of Christ through songs of ministration. Put your hands together for the voice of power. God is good and all the time. Hallelujah. Wherever you are sitting in this place, just look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm happy that you are still under the covering of the Lord. God is working. God is working. Oh, tell your neighbor, I'm, so, I'm happy that you are still under the covering of the Lord. And how many of you know that God is working? Oh, I said, how many of you know that God is working? Even in the late night hours, God is still working. Even when we are asleep, he is working on our behalf. He doesn't sleep, no slumber. Because he is a promise keeper.
God is working He's up to something I may not see it But still I'm trusting God is working He is working He is working God is working 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 Everybody say God is working He is up to something I may not see it Still I'm trusting God is working 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 God is working Working One more time Say God is working He's up to I may not see it My God, the promise keep on Sees every tears that fall My God is never early And He is never late He's always right there on time But if He said it, surely He meant it And if He meant it, surely he will do, 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 hey, God. God is working. Let me hear you say. I may not see it. I may not see it. Still I'm trusting. Still I'm trusting. God, is working. God is working. God is working. 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 God is working. God is working. 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 Pupu pa pupu baby, pupu pa pupu baby, baby. A pupu pa pupu baby, a pupu pa 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 pa. Everybody hear me say, pupu pa pupu baby, a pupu pa pupu baby. Everybody hear me say, pupu pa pupu baby. My God is never LA 
and he's never late. He's always right there on time. May I ask the entire church to be on their feet? Everybody be on your feet. I want us to engage in the five minutes of prayer. Can we do that? There is too much happening. I want us to pray. We are here for the spirit. We are not here to make anybody feel good. We are here to impact. Wherever you are in this place, lift up, including the choir. I want you to pray. Lift up your voice. If you can sing, you can pray. Open up your mouth. Everybody, lift up. Everybody, don't whisper. We are not whispering. Quiet. Bend. Sound. Lift up your voice in this place. Can you lift up our microphones? We are praying in this place. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lift it up. You can do better. Come on. Come on, I want to hear you pray. Lift it up. I want to hear everybody pray. Lift up your voice. Call and demand the Spirit of God. We need the Spirit in this place. Everybody lift up your voice. He did about see Abaha. Mande de 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 bo si baha. Mata ta 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 bo ha. Hinda da 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 bo si bi da ha. I wish I had some prayer warriors in this place that want to experience the spirit tonight. Sata da da bo sa baha. He da 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 da. I don't need slow prayers. Choir, lift up your voice and travel in the atmosphere. He ba da 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 bo sa baha. Man de 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 bo sa. Man de 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 de. I wish I had a youth. I had some adults that want to pray in the spirit. Oh da 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 bo si baha. Man de 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 bo sa baha. He ba da 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 bo sa. He da 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 bo si baha. Man de 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 da bo sa baha. Da 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 bo sa baha. Da ba da ba da bo sa. Ba di de da da bo si. Man de 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 baha. Man de 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 bo ha. Man de 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 bo sa. He ba da 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 ha. He ba da 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 ha. Man de 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 ba ha. He ba da 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 ha. He ba da 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 ha. He ba da 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 ha. He ba da 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 da. He ba da da do sa. He ma da ya bo sa ba ha. He ba ya ba ya da da ha. Man da 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 bo sa. He ba ko ta ya da ba ha. He ba da 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 da. Man di 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 da bo sa ba ha. He ba da ba 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 ba. He da 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 bo sa. He ba da 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 ha. He ba da 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 da. Da 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 bo sa. He da 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 da. Holy, holy, are you, Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. Holy, are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Oh, can we just lift it up? You are holy. You are holy.
worshipers and not just singers. We want to say, Are you Lord God? Almighty. You are worthy, righteous, redeemer. Worthy is your name. You are holy. As we stand in faith, I look upon your countenance. I look upon your countenance. I see the fullness of your grace. I can only buy. Can, can we lift it up and say, My God, you are awesome in this place. You are awesome in this place. My God, you are awesome in this place. You are worthy of my praise. You are worthy of my praise. You are my life. You are awesome in this place. Mighty God, my God, you are awesome in this place. You are awesome in this place. Awesome in this place. Our Father, you are worthy of your praise. To you are alive. You are awesome in this place. Mighty. So we let us say, Awesome God. How great you are. Say you are some God. Oh, 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 Oh my God, we say, I love you, Lord. For your mercy never failed me all my days. All my days. I'll be held, I'll be held in your head. From the moment that I wake up, oh. From the moment that I wake up. Till I lay my head. Sing the, I will sing of the goodness, of the goodness of God. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. For your mercies never fail. For your mercy never fail. All my days. All my day. I'll be handy. I'll be handy. From the moment that I wake up. From the Till I lay my head, I lay my head I'm, gonna I'm gonna sing of the goodness, of the goodness of God. So we wanna lift it up, say all my life All my life you have been faithful My God, all my life you have been so good All my life you have been so Oh, 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 oh,
the goodness I love your voice I love your voice you have led me through You are close like no other. I know you are a father, and I know you are so great. And I have lived on the good. Come and sing it again. I love your voice. I love your voice. Cause you have led me through. Can somebody just declare it? Just declare it in the heart. He was close like no other. I know you are so father. And I know you are so friend. I have lived the family. The goodness. The goodness. We want to lift it up and say, All my life. All my life. So, so good. Oh my God, you have been so, so good. With every breath, With every breath I, I will sing, I will sing of your goodness, of your goodness. For the last time, for the last time, of my life, of my life. Goodness. Of the goodness of God. We will sing, we will sing, we will sing, I will sing of the goodness, of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. If you are happy that you are in the presence of the Lord, just put the two hands together and make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah to the Lord. Another hallelujah. Well, people of God, this is the second day of this great conference. We are fortunate and blessed to have such a great man of God in the mix of his, the believers. Amsterdam are blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, that you want to move because tomorrow is loaded. Tomorrow we are going to have anointing service. So I truly salute to all men of God and uh, my wonderful son, Pastor William. You're welcome. Put our hands together for him. And my own friend, Reverend Kwesin K, is in the house. Put your hands together for him. And all the men of God who are present, I truly salute. We don't take it for granted for coming. May the Lord bless you and your ministry. Amen. Well, this hour, we are going to change the, the direction. I want us to introduce our, the servant of God through a video so that all of us will have idea what the Lord is using this man of God to touch lives. So as we are about to introduce him to the podium, can our media team can... Hello, my name is Eastwood Anaba. Amsterdam, the Netherlands, here we come again. And this time the program is The Spirit, Holy Ghost Revival Center, my favorite, favorite base. I'm coming back home. 
I believe is going to be very powerful. It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. And the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. These are the unforgettable words of Jesus Christ. Let me see you there as the power of the Holy Ghost comes upon us. Amen. Today, I brought myself. I am the sacrifice. I have more than a tongue. Today, I brought myself. I am your worship. Lord, receive. Hello, my name is Eastwood Anaba. Your hands together and make a joyful noise. Lift up your hands. Amen. Can you lift up your hands to Jesus? And I want you to pray in the spirit. Come on, somebody lift up your voice and pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Magarabasi Anahaka. I can't hear you. The last time I checked, you were praying stronger than this. Pray. Remove every hindrance and pray. Somebody come and lift up your voice. Keep praying. Lift up your voice and pray. Keep praying. Magada bazuni ni misaya rabata kabahaka. Lezanda mazuni ni misaya nda mahaka toske. Ribobo si bahataka. Regada bazuni ni misaya nda mahanga. Libai da gabahando. Rebo zandi ni miha. Kabai da gabahando. Zimbayan tiri ni moziata. Likantara la mamo zanti ni ni mikabaha. Roko Shanti Mizaya, Zamba Dunia, Demba, Tunis Maniake Mosia Labahaka, Rabaita Kabahando, Zimbali Antori de Bizai, In Tololo Momo, Sila Labahakata, In the name of Jesus, Koloski Misiana, Ikada Bazuni and Delele Mozanti de Mikabai, Tano Masia Neme Akatunde Baba, Zali Masaya Neme Kabian Narababe, Shanta Bahato Keseke Mehakatai, Leko Tolo Bobo, Shanti de Mizaya, In Tolo Manua Zigiria Bagadunia, Kapaida Kabadunia, Deneme Kabadunia, Ibadunia, Neketele Lebozian Damahan, Kapatunte, Panti de Rubaregere Babe, Shantara Babu Hantara Remekal, Lampadunia, Tiske. Mosiana Maha, Kapaita Kabahan, Norolo Bosianda la Malosi, Yapazuni and Delele Mosi, Ikaton Nerele Mose, Yakutatani and Delele Mose, Ipatuni and Delele Mose, Capitani Nemesiana Mahaka, Legadagadaga, Capatuni and Kemosaya, Inema no Messiane me Akatanda, Rimposanti de Bacapon Nere Bababaya, Akuna Ninia Nemesia da Baha. Tony Nemosiane me akata Baina ne America Basuri ne Mosiana Lampaduni andere ne Mosia lehe i kaponde papante mandu ne misayata le katuni akabia godozo goboshan in tololo bobosian pantere le mamosian i patuni andere le mosian yang godozo goboshian i katalala baboro ne mosian corona mana ne mesian in tololo baboro ne mosian yang kede de bodona baboro Zian in tolo la ba 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 zian bantele la ba 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 zian ikot la ba 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 zian libatoni andere la ba zian ine masai na ne America ba zian likatala la ba ba zanti ne miha la patos kenia ke mosante ripazoni ame kabata ikala la ba ba zian na la ba kabaha in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Everybody lift up your hands at the same time. 
everybody keep your hand up at the same time and continue praying in the spirit lifting up holy hands lifting up holy hands continue praying lift up your hands continue praying katunia kedebaha ya katune kabati ya gada gabaha le katunia debro debo si andamaha le kabatunia kibia katakabaha shida dabaha taka shida baha katakabaha shida baha katakabaha in the name of jesus and shout an amen. amen and you may be seated and god bless your life in jesus most holy name can i hear somebody shout another amen tonight amen. we thank god for your life and thank you for coming again saturday is not a particularly interesting day people find it easy to go to church because you get up on saturday and you have so many things to do so by saturday night there are many events saturday night they shut down because Sunday morning they have to go to church and you still found your way to come here. Thank you very much. And God bless your life. And like teacher said, we, we are excited to see all the pastors who are here today. The Reverend Chris in case in the house. Thank you so, so much. And um, my good friend, the Reverend Midor Chibumpu is in the house. All the way from the, all the, way from the great Republic of Lewadin. And we are excited to see him. Pastor William, thank you, and um, we just bless God for all your lives. Everybody here, Prophet Michael Percy, Dankwa, all of you, thank you so, so much. And as for our host teacher, very effective, dynamic, and so dedicated. For all these years, we've been friends, and it remains the same. And we thank God for his life and for his wife, Josephine. God bless your lives in the name of Jesus. Now, yesterday, I was talking to us about the fact that Prophetically, I see the time in which we are, and it's a time when people have to be very careful about offenses. I, I notice that people are, people are very offended. People are very offended. And the kind of things that offend them are not things that should offend them. Today, I, I did a meeting with some pastors, and we did it by Zoom. And I was telling my wife later on, I said, people are carrying unjustifiable offenses. You know, the, the, there is a hymn when we were young, we used to sing a certain hymn. What a friend we have in Jesus. And one of the things, one of the lines of that song I like is, oh, what needless, no. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. So he's talking about needless pain we bear. But sometimes it's a needless offense. It's not needed. You don't need it. And the serious thing is that it has nothing to do with you. In fact, many people are angry in our world. And when you watch what is making you angry, it has nothing to do with them. It has nothing. You can see somebody is very depressed. And the reason for the depression is that Manchester United has lost a match. What has that got to do with you? When they lost the match, did you lose money? No. Were you the one they were going to pay if they had won the match? I'm asking you a question. If they had won, are you the one they will pay? They'll give you winning bonus. The coach, do you know him? Does he know you? Oh, no, no. Does he know you? Is he your father's son? Your, 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 your uncle's son? No. Is he your cousin? No. So, a war, meaning bauna. I'm speaking gun language. What is disturbing you? What's your problem? And then, a how? Why are you so troubled? You can't sleep, you can't eat. Then they ask, mind you. Mind you means mind your business. Mind your own business. This thing has nothing to do with you. Okay. So you see, people are offended. And after the offense, I talked to you about the transference of mantles that we are seeing in the last days that some of the anointings that were on the face of the earth, which we used to see in the Bible and admire, they are coming back. They are coming back exactly when, I don't know, but I can tell you when those anointings come, uh, the world will be something else. No, a time is coming, and it will not be church. 
That is why I love this song, Don't Sing Sings. I don't know whether the organist can just speak. Where are your bass guitarists and things? They've gone to drink malt. <laughs> okay. Sometimes you go and eat kinky and return. I'm just, I'm just pulling their legs. He said, this is holy moment when God walks in on us. Every gaze is on the lion and the lamb. This is holy moment. When God, God walks in on us, every gaze, every gaze is on the lion that This is holy moment. When the glory, when the glory come, there will be no words to say. Oh, when the glory, hey, when the glory come, there will be no words to say. Oh, when the glory. There'll be no words to say. Oh, when the glory, when the glory. Eric should go and learn the whole song. Because this song, the part I love is the organ work. So when the organist doesn't know the song, it's a wahala. Eh, Eric, even Bogatanga, we sing this song. <laughs> and I like ding, 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 ding. Tin 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 so this is holy moment when God walks in on us. So every gate is on the lion and the lion. Hallelujah. That is why, that is why in a football match there is always a substitution bench. So that when um, Grealish is struggling, they'll bring in 14. So we should have been having another organist. So that if there's a particular song he's not very comfortable with, another person will come and fire that one. I really want the song, pa. But, and the organist is the main person in the song. Uh, and uh, Eric, 
Oh, Eric. Everybody say Eric. Oh, Eric. We're good here now. What about? Okay, let's stop that one. This one to you will struggle. Out of my belly shall flow. You see, and the out of my belly shall flow too. The organist has a lot of work to do. But you may be seated. God bless you. Let me, let me cut that part of the meeting out. Let me cut that part of the meeting out. You know, I remember one day I was doing a meeting and uh, somebody, gave me a, a, somebody gave me a hint and said, the time is going, the time, the time, the time. So I said, my own doesn't move like that. Too. My kind of ministration is not the kind you can move. No, I'm not a lecturer. The pastors who are lecturers, their own is easy. They have been set like um, a machine. So when it's time to speak, they'll just say what they want to say when sit down. Our own, you have to be exploring. It's like somebody trying to give an injection to a patient. You have to, be keep, you have to keep looking to see where you're going to punch. So you are looking for some space in the spirit to enter. And I tell you, sometimes it can take you time. At times it's like you are singing a song. Sometimes you tell people to pray. So you can sing the song and you haven't hit the chord yet. Shall we pray? And it doesn't come. Shall we worship? And it doesn't come. And sometimes you are just waiting for somebody to trigger a certain sound or somebody to make a certain movement then the whole spirit will burst open and that is why ministry is a teamwork the choir ashes congregation everybody lift up your hand and just worship him all right thank you um eric eh, 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 eh. eric eh, eh. Eric, a year means it's okay. But, but don't leave the place. Just, just remain sitting and then. Uh, amen. Now, so we, 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 we looked at um, the transference of mantles. And I was telling you that there are some kind of people that are coming. And um, they are going to carry some dangerous anointings. Very dangerous. Um, I don't know who they will be. But they will make many people uncomfortable. Because the anointing they will carry will be so dangerous. And anytime God shows me those, those people, they are not in a church building. They don't even have churches. They meet in the open air. Their miracles are on the street. They walk long distance. And when they are walking, people follow them. Wherever they go, they start a church. And the church they are doing is not like a church where you have members who you know that these are your members. You know, like the way today, we know that these are our members, and we build a wall around them, and they cannot go anywhere else. And they have membership certificate. These people's members don't have certificate. Every week, every day, they will be changing. And that's because they are moving. They don't even have time. They don't have time to sit down and pastor babies who are refusing to grow. In fact, Almost all our churches are day nursery for people who are refusing to grow. Including the one I pastor. The number of babies and children in our churches. People who are not growing in the spirit one bit. When I finish with you, next week I'm going back home. And I'm going to meet the nursery. No, I'm telling you the fact. I'm telling you the fact. In a church where you must tell them one thing more than once, they are babies. They, 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 they are children. And you have to scream and shout. Huh? If they have to give an offering, you have to beg them. No, they are, they are babes. They, they are children. Pray. And this is, you must say, pray, 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 pray. Clap your hands and pray. Clap your hands and pray. Otherwise, don't pray. Uh. 
But they are gossiping. Nobody tells them gossip, 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 gossip. Preach, Papa. A time is coming. Nobody will tell you clap your hands and pray. If you pray, stop. Have you ever seen somebody where a bomb is going to blast in a building and they told them run? All you say is, you, do, you won't finish saying bomb. You just say boo. <laughs> oh, these are babes. So you see Jesus talking and he said, the flesh profits nothing. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. And the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And we are gradually, gradually, we are coming to that time. We are coming to that time. When mantles and anointings will be transferred, a stinks anointings will show up again. Strangely, I believe I will see it in my lifetime. I believe I'll see it in my last time. lifetime. I, I, may not, I may not be one of those people. I may not be one of those people. And truth is that I am not likely to be because people like us are spoiled already. No, 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 we have expired. And that's because I tell you, teacher, me and you can never be those people because the decisions they will take and the way they will move and the way they will act if me and you do it, people will be very offended. No, no, no. There are going to be some kind of people who don't care what they say. He will come here. You see, like the way I'm doing this program. If he goes back to the hotel and God tells him, leave. Tomorrow morning, by the time he gets to his hotel, he has left. You will call it disappointment. He calls it appointment. And he will tell you, the Holy Ghost told me to move. I'm in Belgium. How? What? Mm. We publicize the program. He says, yes, you publish it, but the spirit pushed me. Mm. And in the days of old, Kenneth Hagin and Coase days, that is what used to happen. You invite him for a revival, you tell him, how long are you staying? He said, he doesn't know. And this meeting we are supposed to do two days can last two weeks or one month. He will just tell Bogatanga, I'm not coming. There's a revival in Amsterdam. I can't come. God has detained me in Amsterdam for two months. I'm telling you, fire will just charge. But you know our time? Gossip. He went to abroad, refused to come. He went abroad. He, he just went to Amsterdam. Went and saw sausage. And bacon. Bacon, 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 bacon. The man went. Saw his son Jean-Pierre and his daughter Vanessa refused to come. He doesn't love us. That is why it cannot be me. No, no, no. Because those people, Yehoah, and they have no reputation to protect. They will pray for cripples, pray for blind people. In a traffic light on the street. And they don't care. But me, I'll be worried. If I pray for cripple in public and it doesn't work, Jesus. social media will capture it. It's who run about struggles with cripple. <laughs> so I'll be worried about what people will say. But these men, they don't care what anybody will say. Mm. Let me tell you, people, they are coming. Oh. They are coming. Pastors will be very uncomfortable mm. if they come into your church. Mm. They'll be seeing all kind of all manner of visions. Mm. They are coming. Amen. By the way, Jesus just appeared. Sat in a temple, they gave him scripture to read. And they didn't know the scripture was about he himself. He got up and started reading the scripture. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The people were clapping. They thought he was talking about somebody else. Because they are used to the Bible is talking about somebody. They don't know the Bible is talking about me. When he finished, there was a chair in the synagogue reserved for the Messiah. He sat in that chair. He looked at them and said, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your midst. Oh, 
people. I can tell you it cannot be me. Because the way I'm concerned about what people say, it can't be me. Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And then when they talk and talk and talk, he said, but you, who do you say I am? They say you are the Christ, the son of the living God. But I'm telling you, too many pastors are too concerned about what people will say to be among these people. They are wild people. Listen, there's none of us here, pastors, who can turn water into wine. What would people say? Water into wine. Water into bubra. Bubra. <laughs> ha! That pastor who went and turned water into wine, he's a magician. He is, yes. And he's a sinner. If you turn water into honey, they may believe you a little. But water into. <laughs> they, they, they say you're not a man of God. He's not a man of God. Preach, Papa. If you walk on water today, they say you are a magician. Occultist. Occultist. Occult. He was walking on water. Oh, you took five loaves of bread, two fishes. And multiply. He said, Cha, Professor Hindu. <laughs> These men of God. Ah, ritual, oh, ritual. Listen, we are praying for the power of God to move, but we have labeled the power of God as the power of the hey, devil. Hey, hey. Oh, no, 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 no. People, uh. if a man of God appears today like Jesus, will you accept him? You will not. I know you are just pretending. Mm -hmm. He entered church, started caning people. You are paying this house into a den of thieves. He, pastor, teacher, appears here, starts caning people. Mm -hmm. They say, oh, that man of God, he has become a teacher. He, he, the way teachers cane people, that is what he has become. He's not a man of God. He's not a man of God. He's not a man of God. The pastor who gets angry starts caning people. He's not a man of God. God has not called him. Look, I can tell you, God has not called him. Also, we are praying to be men of God, but we cannot. No, no, no. I don't know about you, but I can't. Because I'm too worried about what people say. No, sometimes you can't sleep. When you are six feet, when you are six feet, two inches tall, and they tell you you are four feet, you can't sleep. You are black. They say you are white. You didn't do it. They say you did it. Huh, I can't sleep. But this man, oh Jesus, there will be too much. I'm praying. And in these last days, as we are moving, aggressive pursuit of the spirit. Listen, one of my favorite scriptures I love when I'm talking about revival is Acts chapter 8. No, no, no. I just love Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Everything about Acts chapter 8 is my part of the Bible. When Paul and co were tormenting the church and there was persecution all over the place and the Bible said a man called Philip found himself in Samaria. And the power of God broke loose in Samaria. A magician is there immediately. Magician is the overthrown. Magician is dethroned. I see men appearing who will go into cities and they will overthrow magicians and sorcerers and witches and diviners and enchanters. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. In almost all our cities, there are people that control the city. There are people who hold the city. In the night, they control things. The Bible said the people looked at the same Simon the Sorcerer or Simon Magus because Simon Magus saw himself. This man said, look, man, you pull the hand. What kind of soldier is this? <laughs> Simon Magus, the man was a sorcerer, a wizard. A wizard. Can I tell you this? If you don't believe in men of God, I want to tell you there are men of the devil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, listen to me, people. They sit in their room and control your business. 
they sit in their room and call you to come and buy from them things you don't want to buy because magic is pulling you to come and buy. Open it's good to see you. And run me shop, I mean wife, but one case I That's Greek. We are speaking. Greek, Greek language. You say, me, I don't believe in all these men of God. I don't believe. Mm, mm, well, mm. let me tell you. I'm happy you don't believe in men of God, but let me tell you, wizards exist. Yes. Yes. Huh? There are people who make sure somebody cannot have a child. There are people who make sure somebody cannot marry. There are people sitting in Africa or in Curaçao or Suriname who have made sure you are in Holland, but you can never prosper in the Netherlands. They are making sure. You say that I don't believe in men of God. I don't believe in men of God. You don't believe in them. But there are other people, men of the devil and women of the devil, who you don't believe in, but they are controlling your destiny. That is why you are still sitting where you are sitting. You are sitting there, I don't believe in men. I don't believe in men of God. Yeah, me, I don't even believe in the men of the devil. Then why are you still where you are? Don't you think that satiris parables, all things being equal, you should be performing better than where you are? Yes. Look at you, intelligent, blessed. God has blessed you. You are holding an education. Beautiful woman, you stand in front of the mirror. You look at yourself. You know you are there. But still, you can't marry. You can't move on in life. Something is holding you. Young man, everything about your life has disintegrated. You are still shouting, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in God. Why are you still where you are? Why? Listen, there is a controlling factor. Something has held you transfixed, rooted, and planted at a place. And that was what was happening in Samaria. Simon Magus, magician, wizard, controlled the whole city. Until one man called Philip appeared. Mayakoshi Mahaka. And I see those people appearing. Listen, there are too many men of God in Amsterdam. Too many men of God in Bogatanga. Too many men of God in Accra. Too many men of God in Africa. Too many men of God in Ghana. Sometimes you don't need all those numbers. You need just one. Yes. Just one. God sent them just one Philip. Just, just one Philip. Just, just one Philip. Just one. May you be that one. May you be that one. Oh, Pastor William and others. You are young. Don't look at us. Believe God for the real thing. Kwame, you guys believe God for the real thing. Our own is an introduction. The main chapter is not written yet. Believe God for the main thing. Believe God for the main thing. Believe God for the main thing. There is something they call the real deal. Believe God for the real deal. And you know what the truth is? We cannot train you. Because what is coming, we don't have it. We cannot give it to you. Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give a thee. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Now, if we don't have it, we cannot give it to you. You only give what you have. We, we don't have it. At least I can tell you I don't have it. You see, the thing I see coming, I don't have it. John the Baptist knew he didn't have it. He said the bridegroom is coming. I am the friend of the bridegroom. I rejoice because of him. Listen, I see some young people coming. Mm -hmm. Some of them are old, but they will be transformed. And they are old who are not known on the pulpit. They are old who are sitting in the pews. And nobody recognizes them. And they are sitting in the church. And with all humility, nobody knows them. When you Google their name, it will not appear. But heaven knows them. Flesh and blood does not reveal this unto you. But my father who is in heaven, I'm talking about people with a heavenly mandate. People with a heavenly calling. Somebody clap your hands, scream like your voice is yours. And praise Jehovah. Jesus. Jesus. 
Uh huh. Where did you learn that one? Uh huh. You are a proper organist. <laughs> the sound is in me. I'm an oil engineer. When I want to find the Holy Ghost and I want to find the move, sometimes I find it in a song. The, ba- the Bible said, the prayer of Habakkuk the prophet upon Shiginov. And the Shiginov has to do with music. I'm not a prophet like you. But I have my own way of seeing the prophetic. My da 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 Hey. Something is happening. You see, I can't, I can't give it to them. The thing is coming. They'll look at you like this and they can read your heart. Hmm? Nobody will call them reverend. Nobody will call them pastor. Nobody will call them bishop. Nobody will call them doctor. You just call them by their first name, John. I don't know whether they'll be having a beard like yours. But they'll be very weird personalities. <laughs> Acts chapter 8. Philip appeared. Philip appeared. And the Bible said he started preaching. Demons were screaming and coming out of people. When was the last time you saw a man of God walking and demons are screaming? I'm not talking about what we call deliverance service. Because deliverance service is a provoked, it's a programmed service. What did I say? Deliverance service is a programmed service. Where somebody's coming to church and you have prepared their minds that they are coming for deliverance. So already his mind has been prepared that he's coming to vomit and he's coming to roll on the ground. So most of the time, it's not a deliverance service. The people are just reacting to something. Mm. Mm. But I'm talking about where nobody has said it's a deliverance service. Uh Then you are walking at the train station and demons are screaming. And you enter a hospital and demons are screaming and coming out of people. Our men of God today, you only know they are men of God when they are in the church. I'm yet to see a man of God on the streets. Our men of God today, when you meet us at the shopping mall, we are all the same. There is a story about a pastor who went to a drinking pub to go and drink beer. Pastor. And whilst he was drinking, his member came in. And he asked the member, open them up. <laughs> what are you looking for here? He said, hey, 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 sorry. This, <laughs> pastor, this is not the church for you to control me. You too, pastor. What are you doing? I can even see you are drinking already. Please, this is not the church. But you know what? On the streets, we are the same. You know what? So I go to, um, I go to um, what is the name? Um, what is the name of that, your, 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 your popular shop? Where the site, departmental shop? Bankov, is that it? No, Bankov, is that? No, Bankov is a place, isn't it? Or it's a shop. Okay, so you go to Bankov and we are buying. And then I go and I buy a shirt. You two come and buy a shirt. And then we are both normal. So we are the same. But I'm looking for the time. When you are buying dresses and I enter, the one who is coming to set the thing, there's a demon and the person is shouting. And then I go to the place, the till to pay. And the one who is receiving the money starts shouting. Then it shows that there's a difference between me and you. You are a member and I'm a man of God. But when we come to church, already politics has made me the man of God and made you the member. And it's, and it's spiritual politics. That has made you look better than me. But spiritually, it doesn't mean that you are better than me. If you want to know you are more spiritual than me, then we shouldn't prove it in the church. Let's meet outside. When Elijah wanted to show 
who the man of God is. When Elijah wanted to show that he was a man of God, he didn't say, let's meet in the synagogue. He said, let's go to Mount Carmel. Listen, the day the true men of God meet, you will know them at the train station. You will know them in an aeroplane. When they will enter the aeroplane, and they are going to sit not in first class, but in economy. And the guy is going towards his economy seat. And there's pandemonium. And the whole of economy is shaking. And they say, look, this man, take him to first class and hide him there. That is how they will sit in the first class. Not by a ticket, but by spiritual pandemonium. Ah. <laughs> those of you who understand spiritual things are clapping and those of you oh, Yehoah, Yehoah, Yehoah Yehoah I'm praying for the day when I am so free that I'll come to Amsterdam and the power of God will break loose and I'll go home tonight and phone my baby, my wife, my girlfriend and tell her pal it looks like I'm going to be in Amsterdam for the next one month. Can you take the next plane and come and join me in Amsterdam? Because what I can feel, I can sense a revival, I can sense the power of the Holy Ghost, and I'm not going to let the desert process hold me back from my destiny. Because sometimes you go to places and you can see the hunger in the people. And you must leave them and go back to your so-called church. I was to go and preach somewhere. And uh, there is a place I normally preach. And then for some reason, I'm not going there this year. And I told my wife, it doesn't matter. I will just go home. Then I told my wife, I said, Pearl, but it's equally boring to go home. I'm going to go to this congregation who are so used to me that they think they are doing me a favor by coming to church. Mm. I'm going to go to, to church where I must remind the members that there's service on Tuesday. I'm going to go to a church where I must beg the members, follow KIE, and I'm going to go to a church where I must beg the members that you know how uh, we are going to do a meeting uh, and follow me online. I'm going to go to a church where I'm practically begging the members to give an offering to, towards ministry which they need more than I need. When you go to a shop to buy a shoe, who begs you to pay? When you go to buy a shirt, who begs you to pay? When you go to buy food in a restaurant, who begs you to pay? When you go to fix your hair, who begs you to pay? When you go for your nail extensions, who begs you to pay? Come on, grow up and repent! 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 Feel it! Feel it. He appeared in some area. And we are not told where his church was. I don't even know whether they were meeting in a building. I don't know whether they were meeting in a building. But I'm sure everywhere he passed, something started happening. Cripples were walking. When was the last time you saw a pastor on the streets and a cripple started walking? Oh, there must be repentance beginning from me. You read it. 20 most powerful men of God in Africa. I said, who told you that? Come on, can you change it and say 20 most powerful internet preachers in Africa? The reason they look so powerful is because they are on the internet. The most powerful men of God, they are in villages. Nobody has heard their name. They don't even have a microphone. They don't have speakers. They don't even know people. Some of them don't even have a phone. Nobody knows them on earth, but heaven knows them. Nobody follows them on earth, but heaven knows them. The most, the most powerful men of God, the most powerful man of God, who all the internet follow. 
Internet will follow you when you preach things that will please their itching ears because you don't drive them away from fornication and you don't drive them away from alcohol and you don't drive them away from drugs. You know what? Your preaching makes them comfortable and they want to follow you online. But I tell you, if you are a heavenly preacher and the power of God is upon you on the internet, nobody wants to listen to you because your words make them uncomfortable. I can't declare the power of God is coming when you stop preaching like John the Baptist your congregation will reduce ah! The first thing a preacher needs deliverance from in order to do the will of God is not deliverance from the devil. It's deliverance from people. Human beings and what they say. Sometimes I, I, tell, I tell my wife, could you drive this for me? I tell my wife, I said, Fair, most of the things pastors are looking for, I'm not looking for it. I don't want it. At my age now. At my age now. I don't want a crowd. At my age now. Money is not my priority. At my age now. Nice, nice people are not my priority. You know what, people? We want to own everything, including a coffin. Yeah. Human beings want to own everything, including coffin. Mm. So they even die, and they put gold in their coffin. Oh. Jesus was a ma- wise man. He died, and they buried him in a borrowed tomb. Mm. You know why he was buried in a, a borrowed tomb? If the tomb is borrowed, you'll be in a hurry to rise up and leave. <laughs> because it is borrowed. So he was buried in a borrowed tomb. He rose up the third day and left because the owner himself will die. And if you don't leave early, they will come and remove you from the tomb and put the owner there. So, the tomb was a borrowed tomb so that he can get up early. Some of you, your tomb is your own. Your coffin is your own. That is why you die and stay there forever. Unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of them that were possessed with them. The Bible said the people believed. And then he sent to Jerusalem and said, Let them bring John. In fact, the disciples in Jerusalem heard it. The apostles, they heard the revival. The news went to Jerusalem. And when Peter and John heard it, they came there, they said, we are the apostles. They came and laid hands on the people. They received the Holy Ghost. We were filled with the Holy Ghost. Simon Magus was reduced to nothing. And the Philip is walking there. And the Bible said, the angel of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord. The, 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 let, let me get, get, let me get the, the exact word. Let me get the exact word. I don't want to get it wrong. I don't want to get it wrong. And the man is standing there and ministering and ministering. And the Bible said, and the angel of the Lord speak unto Philip, saying, Arise and go to the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is called desert. Leave this revival. Get up and go. So tomorrow if I get up all of a sudden and you hear I've gone to London. Oh, that brother's hood. He's not organized. He's a very indisciplined man. We're doing revival with him. Second day, he just got up and left. Mm. That is why these days I'm choosing to do my own plane ticket, my own hotel, like the way I came here. <laughs> my own hotel, my own plane ticket. You know so. Mm. So tomorrow, if I leave, can you complain? Yeah. 
<laughs> and told him, Eradi said, the places I send you to, believe me to send you with your own plane ticket, your own hotel, so that any day you must leave. Like tonight, I can leave at 1 a.m. Teacher, I'm in He asked me, should they pick me at the airport? I said, no. I will appear in the meeting. Don't come to the airport. I will just appear. Because the wind blew it where it listed. You hear the sound thereof, but you cannot tell from when it's coming and where it's going. Sometimes all the plane ticket and the hotel, they just control you. They just control you. Eh? When I got to the airport, they said, what are you coming to do? I said, I'm coming on holiday. I didn't mention your name. <laughs> I said, holiday. Where are you going to stay? I gave them the hotel. And that's the fact. Holiday, holiday. You should see me alone sitting in the hotel and looking in the air and singing songs of praise and meditating. Holiday. <laughs> Listen. There. The man is ministering. The Bible said. And the angel of the Lord speak unto Philip saying, Arise and go to the south. And he goes there. I'm talking about people are going to look for God. And wherever God is, they will go. Wherever God is, they will go. They will leave a city and go to the desert. Today we did a pastor's meeting. And one of the senior pastors said, Daddy, we have to be mindful of the pastors who live in the rural areas, in the places that are geographically disadvantaged. And we must take care of them. I said, I disagree with you. I said, I'm a preacher who lives in Bogatanga. I don't see preachers in Accra as better than me. I don't. I don't see preachers who live in Los Angeles or Las Vegas as better than me. Yes. I am not in a geographical disadvantage. I am in a heavenly advantage. I'm not talking to somebody at all because Maya Katabasia, where you think there's no help, that is where the help is coming from. Oh. Recently, I went to preach in three big churches. Three big churches. In the city of Accra. When I finished preaching, they gave me honorarium. I said, please keep it and help your ministry. Mm -hmm. Another one who brought it, I said, keep it and help your ministry. Mm -hmm. Another one brought it, I said, keep it and help your children's home. Big churches. Mm -hmm. Who have everything, I said, keep it. Mm -hmm. Why? The time when you are walking about on earth because of what you can get is over. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. It's over. God is saying, I want to take over. I want to look after you. I want to be your blesser. I want to be the Jehovah Jireh. I want to be your Jehovah Nisi. Come on, somebody, clap your hands and scream like your voice is yours and press. No, no, no. I see Bogatanga like the headquarters of the world. And I told the pastor, I said, stop talking to me about pastors in the villages. You are talking to an eagle. Tell my sons and daughters, the fountain gate pastors, they shouldn't look at me coming down to their level. They must come to where I am. I am an eagle and I don't produce duck and chicken. I don't produce duck and chicken. And I don't listen to their complaints. You can be in Bogatanga and be everything God wants you to be. You can be in Bogatanga and turn the whole world upside down. Can I tell you this? John the Baptist was not in a place of geographical and, uh, advantage. The man was at the River Jordan. People left the cities and the churches there. And they went to the man in the River Jordan. I came to announce to you, I believe that I can be in Bogatanga. And airplanes are flying from around the whole world. And now! Watch this, watch this, watch this. Oh, take it. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. The fetish priest in Africa 
who people go to for voodoo. Do they live in cities? Not at all. Villages in a cave. They don't wear clothing. Ambassadors go there. Politicians go there. Chiefs go there. So if you are a pastor and you are in a village and you are failing, it is not because you are in a village. It is because your spirit is a village. There is nothing in your spirit. But if your spirit is full and you are anointed and you have the power of the Holy Ghost, people will move from America and they will come and look for you in Axim. They will leave Britain and they will come and look for you wherever you are. I hear the shout of a revival. I hear the sound of a revival. I hear the sound of the power of the Holy Ghost. I hear the sound of the breakthrough of God. Come on, scream like the voice is yours and praise Jehovah. I told them, I said, Sis, I respect you, but this kind of thing, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I said, since I was the age of 26, they talk about pastors in Accra. You talk about them, you have to add my name, whether you like it or not. But I live in the smallest regional capital in Ghana. Many people can't believe that is where I live. I'm not boasting about anything. I'm here to just tell someone, God can move you from a city and take you to a desert. And the man is in the desert and he sees somebody who has moved from Ethiopia to Jerusalem to worship but I'm sure there are people in Jerusalem who did not go to worship. I see people traveling long distances, long distances. They are looking for God. They are moving from Australia to Kano in Nigeria. They are looking for something. Maya Gadabasia, out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. Yeah, yeah, out of my belly, say, my belly shall flow rivers of light. Out of my belly, say, out of my belly. of living waters out of my belly say out of my belly shall flow rivers of living waters as the river flows as the river flows it begins to break every death into love. It's a love giving river. Oh, let it flow right now. And as the river flows, as the river flows, it begins to break every death into love. It's a love giving river. Oh, let it flow right Flow, 
Get up and go to the desert place. He now saw the chariot, and the Spirit of God told him, Go near and join yourself to this chariot. There is a chariot God will lead you to join. In the last days, there is a chariot God will lead you to join. God will lead you to somebody. God will lead you to a man of God. God will lead you to somebody who needs your ministry. God will lead you to a place. And sometimes you have to leave, leave the crowd and go and look for the individual. Sometimes you have to leave the city and go and look for the individual. Sometimes you have to leave what you are used to and go to something you are not used to. Sometimes you must start a new movement. Sometimes the Fountain Gate Chapel is there, but you must move into EAM and do something. And you know what? There are times, even the EAM, God will tell you to leave them behind because where you are going now, you must go alone. So Jesus left the multitude. He took the twelve. Then he left the twelve and took the three. Then he left the three and went alone. There is a place in life where you must go alone. A time is coming. I see a lone ranger. I see a lone ranger. I see you going alone. Nobody understands you, but you are going. Nobody thinks you are right, but you are going. You are going. Oh. Let As a river flows, if 
begins to bring every dead thing to life. It's a life-giving river. Oh, let it flow right here, right now. Oh, oh, right now. Oh, oh, oh. sitting in, but because of what is sitting in them. In other words, they are not looking at the car you are sitting in, but they are looking for the spirit that is in you. Elijah told Elisha, if you see me go, he didn't say, if you see the chariot. Or these days when we see men of God, it's their chariot we see. Ah, look at the pastor's car. May they see you. And when they see you, you are not coming down, you are going up. Yeah. His brother should preach him. You are preaching, Papa. Am I? Am I? You are preaching, Papa. Preach! Am I preaching? You saw the way I just bowed. I stood here. The angel of the Lord stood by me. I'm not worshiping the angel. Fear just came on me and I took that posture. Uh, uh, oh! Go near! Join yourself to this chariot. And the man of God was running. Then he heard the Ethiopian, you know, was reading something. He asked, Can I sit by you? He said, Why not come up? He sat by him. Do you understand what you are reading? He said, No, somebody has to teach me. He began to teach him. They saw water. Here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? They went down into the water, baptized him. As soon as they finished baptizing, Philip disappeared. When was the last time you heard of a man of God who disappeared? Oh, you will be branded a magician. Mm. <laughs> in the Christianity I know in recent history, there was a man called Baba Lola in Nigeria. Some strange things, they happen only in Nigeria. Because Nigerians are some people who don't care what you say. No, no, no. There's some anointing. For example, Ghanaians, we are too gentle to walk in some anointings. Open Nipa Musroko concern, Ghana for Nigerians and fire home. Yeah. And I'm saying and fire home because I'm a Nigerian by adoption. Hey. 
Nigeria, I am fire home. No, no, no. You can say whatever you want to say. As long as the Nigeria man understands what he's doing and God is in it, he doesn't care. People from my country will consult everybody and wants to see everybody agree before they take a move. Nigeria, they move. Baba Lola, Yehovah. According to the stories I read, this man was going to preach in a place. The wife said, you won't go. Locked him up in a room. He stood in the room, pinned himself to a wall, and prayed and said, Father, I'm appearing at the crusade grounds. He vanished from his room, appeared at the crusade platform. Preach and finish. Came home. The wife said, I locked you up. He said, I vanished. May God give us a vanishing preacher. A vanishing preacher. Listen to me. Those were men of God. And they were not bishops. They were not apostles. They were not archbishops. They were not reverends. He just called the man Baba Lola. Uh, Sunday afternoon, finished preaching. He was praying with his disciples. He said, his members, some of his leaders, he said, shall we pray? They started praying. Sunday evening. They prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. The people got tired and went home. He was still standing there the whole night. The following day they came, he was still standing there. They went to work, came back, he was still standing there. Three days, standing at one spot, praying. After three days, 72 hours, he came back to himself. He said, how many minutes have we been praying? They said, you've been standing here for three days. Where are those men? Today the men are in restaurants. They are holding pastoral breakfast meeting. <laughs> hey. Now when we, when we are so far Asia and ah tea any meat pie and can. Omo ma. Yeah. Omo pop. They take the tea and the malt, and after that you must give them. You no, know, they take the tea and the pie, and after the meeting, you must give them malt to take away. They call that one to go. And after that, you must give all of them small, small envelope, everybody, and thank them for coming. And look at our members. Somebody hasn't come to church. When you ask, why didn't you go to church? They take too many offerings. Too many offerings. And that's because you don't even know the value of what you get in the church. They take offering. And when you are going to church, it's just offering, 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 offering. A time is coming. Nobody will take that your offering. No, no, no. Can I tell you this? A time is coming. Nobody will take that your offering. You will be holding offering like leaks, looking for somebody to take it and you can't get it. Listen, COVID-19, Corona time, Italians were throwing money out of their windows. Something is coming to the world which is worse. You'll be holding this your money and you won't know what to do with it. You see the way God rejected Cain's offering? A time is coming. That your money, God will reject it. Look, you will put your hand in your pocket like this. Remove an offering and the offering will be stuck to your hand. And you are trying to put it in the offering bowl and your hand will not move. And God is saying, I reject your offering. You saw the king who stretched his hand and his hand got frozen. Yeah. You will take the offering and get to this altar. And God will say, I reject your offering. You proud man. You proud woman. Go and sit down. I want people who see it as a privilege for them to give to the things of the kingdom of God. I don't want people that are so arrogant sitting in my house. Oh, I have prayed some prayers. The Lord told me, he said, Eastwood, I want to honor you. I said, Lord, how? He said, start rejecting money. I said, how? He said, there is some favor people should be giving to you. She said, no. It's okay. And he said, when you get to that level, I myself will look after you. Yes, Lord. He will do it. He will do it. But, 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 but Lord, 
I'm in Boga Tanga. You are likely to say in your mind, I'm in Boga. And Boga is a poor place. I never ask God that. I, ne- I know him too much to ask him some questions. I believe him. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. It's a go near. Join yourself to this channel. It's a blessing for you to be in Holy Ghost Revival Chapel. I looked at Brother Nelson today. I told him, Nelson, thank you very much. I said, Nelson, thank you very much. I knew you from the days of Pastor Bibi. This church has gone through so many upheavals, changes, and trials, and temptations, and shakings. And the pastors have been Ghanaians. I saw people here who left. This man comes from Nigeria. I did it. He would have said, I'm not going to stay in this church which has Ghanaian pastors with so much instability. This man remains standing up till today. I told him, I said today, I said, I said, I said Nelson, thank you. Because he's one of my best friends in Holy Ghost. I call him the son of Nell because his name is Nelson the son of Nell. Uh, am I teaching? Go and join yourself to this channel. After that, the man what? Vanished. Very soon we are going to see vanishing men. Anointed men. This man is coming from Ethiopia. He's going to Jerusalem. He's going to see God. You know what? We are going to see people that are so aggressive for God, they will fast and fast and fast and fast. Everybody will be, be worried. Some will spend huge sums of money in the things of the kingdom of God. I see a time coming when one person will just appear in this church and remove all of us from here. And go and do something. You, you know, I went to I had, my, I had my younger brother who lives in a kind of house I don't like. And I've tried to move him. And he has refused to move. Apparently because he thinks he can save money by not moving. You know there are some people who calculate the money before they calculate themselves. (laughs) He happens to be this kind. So just before I came, teacher, I nearly called you to tell you my junior brother is fighting for his life. I can't come. I left my brother admitted in the hospital. The one, the most strategic brother I have. That is why I tell churches that when you invite a preacher to come, be very, very careful. Because sometimes you don't know what they left before they came. Sometimes they come with a lot of pain. Don't add to it. So I left my brother in the hospital. And I went to Accra, he was still in the hospital. They even had to do endoscopy. I'm a pharmacist. I know what endoscopy is. By the time they are calling for endoscopy, it means they are looking for something. Anyway, finally, they didn't see anything. They didn't even see grass cutter. (laughs) Or dancancery in the stomach. But you know, before I left, I told them, I said, find a new house. And I told my wife, they are going to find a new house for this gentleman. Pay for it and get extra money and do the furnishing for him. And move him from where he is and send him there. Now, I'm saying this as a testimony. Some people are going to come into our churches that will make an offering unnecessary. They'll just come to teacher and say, teacher, you know what? For the sake of the way these people are complaining about money, complaining about money, God has blessed me. Teacher, Every week I come to church, I'm going to put 100,000 euros on the altar. Somebody clapping, that is yours. Every week I come to church, I'm going to take 100,000 euros and put it on the altar. And you don't need an offering to run the church. A 
a man of God, he was going to do a convention in Ghana. One member went to the pastor and said, Pastor, I don't want you to receive an offering in this meeting. He said, why? He said, the people talk too much. And we have been hearing some of the things they say. How much will that program cost? He said, 800 and something thousand Ghana cities. She sat down, took a checkbook, hit it on her lap. Papa, this is 800 and something thousand. Pay for the convention. Don't receive an offer. Don't receive an offer. Listen, a time is coming. God will shame you. You'll be holding your money and you don't know where to go with it. I'm talking about a revival. Because we will not even have time to receive an offering. The spirit will be all over the place. From the beginning to the end, lift up your voice. Begin to pray. When the glory comes, Now listen to me. Anybody who loves the altar, anybody who loves the altar, come to the altar and pray. Somebody bring this up to me. But be careful about the water. Somebody pray. If you believe in praying at the altar, I want somebody to come to the altar and pray.
in churches, there is no revival. Whenever you hear announcement in church, it means the church is dead, including my own. Have you ever gone to Kastad and they announced that we are opening tomorrow morning? And people should come here tomorrow morning. Have you gone to Bahenkov? And at 5 p.m., they announce, tomorrow, this shop is going to open. The people are so hungry for the things, they will come again. You don't have to announce. But look at us. You have to announce. You have to threaten. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be very anointed. And while you are announcing, they are chewing, chewing gum. Po, po, po. All. Take it, huh? Any church you go, including my own. And they say announcement. Tuesday, midweek service, it's a dead church. Next Sunday, we are coming here, it's a dead church. That's I. Three days fasting and prayer. Three days fasting and prayer. Receive it, madam. Take it. Oh, come on, take it. Flow. Be different from the rest. Huh? Take it. I hear heaven say there are five people here who are going to be different from the rest. Two of them are in the choir. You'll be different from the rest. Two of them. Take it. Uh, bring it. Take it. Bring it. Uh. Jesus. There are three here. You'll be different from the rest. Look at this young lady. You'll be different from the rest. Take it. Play that sound. And Eric, when we close today, when we close today, Eric, go and master it. That is the sound for this convention. Bring them to me. Listen. To be honest with you, one of the most boring parts of a service to me is announcement. Oh, we have a funeral on Saturday. We are encouraging everybody to come. Mm. Burial service. If we don't bury, I'm going to eat the flesh. <laughs> everybody should know that if somebody's dead, we are going to bury. Why should I want to take 10 announcements? Lord, give me just three people here who fear you. Take it. Three people who fear you. Lift up your hands, everybody. Three people here. One, two, three. Take it. Bring them to me. Three people that fear his name. Ah! Watch his hand so that we don't hurt him. Eric, thank you that you got that sound for me. Come here. Ah, take it. There is one more. Oh, oh, oh. Turn, turn. Turn, turn, turn. a mountain. It's a very high mountain. And the name of the mountain is the mountain of the Lord. And I see seven people. 
The Lord said, I'm inviting you to come to the mountain. That lady, the one somebody's trying to distract by talking to her, come to me. You were one of the first to be invited to the top of that mountain. The Lord said a lot of the people are at the bottom of the mountain. But he wants them to come to the top of the mountain. He said on the top of that mountain, they hear voices. And the voices are the voices of the Spirit of God. Look at one, two, three, four. Look at the power. Uh, Jesus. Uh, and the Lord said, the ways of my spirit are deep. And I want you to follow the ways of my spirit. And he said, blow here.
in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Come on, scream! Sometimes I sit in them meetings with our pastors in Boga or Fountain Gate Chapel and I get very sad. I say, Lord, what I'm looking for is not what these people are looking for. Man of God, I want to see the glory of God. I'm not interested in all these things. To be honest with you, if somebody could handle our church in Boga and God said, just give it to him, I'll leave it for him and walk away. It's not my territory, Josephine, it's not. Something inside me yearns for something that I can see. Sometimes I wish I don't hold a microphone. I told Apostle Jean-Pierre when I came here, I said, Apostle, in the morning, can you guys leave me alone until after 1 p.m.? 1 p.m. I just want to be alone. I just want to be alone. This is not the church I see in the Bible. My New Testament is so different from this dancing and singing and choreography church. Announcements and funeral announcements and child dedication services and baptisms with certificates that don't make sense and don't have spiritual impact. In those days, baptism, you did not get a certificate, you got a cross. And the cross was on your shoulder and they could kill you for being baptized. Today we baptize the people and after that, they have a party. Mm. Baptismal party. Dead church with dead anthems. Who have stopped singing the hymns and they are singing modern day songs. That give them the beat to dance and they don't give them the sound to cry. Uh, and when they come to church, they are looking for miracles. They are not looking for God. Their spirits cannot respond to God. When, when you go and you preach a message and the members don't like it, they'll tell the pastor, don't invite him again. Mm. We don't want this kind of preacher. He makes us uncomfortable. This man makes us uncomfortable. Come here. Take him. Bring him. Oh! Oh! I see the mountain. It's so high. And all the people standing on that mountain are crying. And the reason they are crying is they are looking for gold on the mountain top. And the gold they are looking for is that precious word of God which is missing in our churches. Oh, because the pure word of God drives the people away from the church. They want lies. They want something that would tickle their ear. They want something that tells them the miracle is coming tomorrow and the breakthrough is coming tomorrow. And these people are standing on the mountain top and they are wailing. And as they are wailing on the mountain, the mountain is shaking 
and the base of the mountain is shaking like there's an earthquake. And the earthquake is beginning to spread and cover an area and cover a region. Oh, and cover. The earthquake is covering the entire place. And it's shaking. And this is the kind of prayer that shook the place where the apostles were. And all of a sudden, apart from this lady, I see six people wailing in the building and crying out unto God. And God said, in this assembly tonight, I raise them up as wailing men and women who will cry to God to bring revival to the city of Amsterdam, to the Netherlands, and to the nations of the world and to Europe. Send down your revival. Father, raise them the wailers. The wailers. The wailers. Makataba labasi anata. Oh, I looked at that man. I nearly told him, Sir, you are a very anointed man. Can you bring me this basis? <laughs> Pastor Question K. I'm a revivalist by calling. I'm not the pastor of a church. I can't stand the church members. They bore me to the core. They come to the church to do the pastor a favor. I want wailers like this. I want criers like this. I want a bass guitarist who is sitting in a church not to entertain, but when the spirit of God is moving, the bass guitarist can shake like this. This is it. They are whirling and they are crying out. There is a revival on Twitter, there is a revival on the YouTube. Magadadada. I hear the sound of a wind in this part of the building. There is a sound of a wind. There is a sound of a wind. Come on, take it here right now. There are three of you right now. Three of you. Father, touch the three. There is a sound. 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 One. There is a sound. Two. There is a sound. Three. Come on, receive it right now. There is a sound in your spirit. There is a sound in your spirit. There is a sound in your spirit. Your spirit has been looking for something. And your spirit is finding that thing. Your spirit has been searching for the glory. And your spirit is finding the glory. Ah, come on, take it now. Ah. they see you they think you don't belong because they just look at you but they can't read your heart <laughs> they don't know that something inside of you is crying out for God
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can I tell you this? A lot of the way you think is wrong. You are not doing your pastor a favor by going to church. The days are evil. And when you go to church, you are preserving your soul. Tomorrow morning, you are going to go there to church and you are not doing that pastor a favor. Go look at the announcements they have to make. They call you, you switch off the phone. Oh, my honey, pa. They be are sorry, they be are sorry. Every day church. Lord God Almighty. Makabasi is that Henry at the back? Henry. You see, it's Henry, and that's George. Is that correct? Yes. So this is George Fiau. And this is Henry Anna. They are the two who have been confusing me. Today I've seen both, so I can recognize the two. <laughs> I've also they're looking for something. What we are looking for is not what you think. You know why I like coming to Amsterdam? I've been coming to Europe for years. I have not seen my ministry catch fire and revive out in any part of Europe, including London, like Amsterdam. No, 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 people. I know exactly what I'm looking for. And from the first day I stepped here, I knew this place. It's a place of revival. You know, people, sometimes when you have something, you don't respect it. I've moved around the whole of Europe. The only place in my ministry where I go and different, different, different nationals, all of them gather from Nigeria, from Curaçao, from, from Suriname, Nigeria, South Africa. And we gather multiracial, multiracial, whites and blacks. And we don't even bother where we come from. The only place I see it is this Amsterdam. You know, people, people, you have a good thing you yourselves don't see. This is a land of precious gold. I pray. Lord, help us. Somebody take some envelopes and put them on this altar. Put some here and put some here. Spread them. Spread them. Spread them. I want somebody to come quickly and pick up an envelope. Oh, that's too much. That'll be too much. John, that'll be too much. I want somebody to get up from your seat. Come and pick up an envelope between tonight and tomorrow night. Sow a seed of 300 euros into this ministry. Can you do it? Can you do it? Just 300. Get up and come and do it. Father, I pray for as many as love you and believe in revival and believe in the move of God. Touch their life. 300, get up and come and do it. Oh, I did one yesterday. Do it again. Do it again. Some of you may pick up the 300 and the Lord will tell you a thousand. 
the Lord may even tell you 3,000. I don't know. Can I tell you this from my heart? I want seven more people to come and pick up this envelope and sow that seed of 300. Seven more people. Get up and come. Get up and come. Seven more people. Seven more. That's one. Seven more people. Seven more people. And when you do this, you're not doing the pastors a favor. Six more people. Somebody get up. I speak upon your seed, your offering. May God take you to another level of financial existence. May he remove struggle from your life and bring you to the place where God is your priority and you are God's priority. Can I get six more to get up and come to the frontier and do this? Six more. Thank you, sir. Five more. When I said seven, I know what I'm talking about. May the Lord take you to the place of rest. The five that are left, you are receiving unique grace and the grace will launch you into rest. Somebody get up and come and do it. Do it for your ministry. Do it for your family. Do it for your business. Somebody come on down here quickly. Five people. Get up. Five people. Thank you. Five people. Three more. Lift up your hand and talk to God. The three will come. The three will come. Somebody from the choir, squeeze a sacrifice. Squeeze a sacrifice. Somebody from the choir, squeeze a sacrifice. Ah! Jesus! One more person. We can do it. It's not like we can do it. The world has confused us. Don't take your money and give it to the church. As you give it to who? Some give theirs to football. Others give theirs to a disco. I don't do none of that. Where should I take mine? Somebody pick up this envelope tonight. I want 30 people pick up this envelope tonight. Sow a seed of 100. And the first 30 who are coming. I pray, may he bless you, and when the blessing is coming, may it be quick. Anybody who is rushing and doing this, may it be quick. And if you pick the envelope from, for the hundred, and you are married, pick two. One for your wife, who has stopped loving you. She may increase the love. Some of you, your wives have retired from love. They've gone on retirement. The love has expired. I'm left with 10 people sowing this seed of 100. 10 more people. 10. This is one. This is two. Eight more. Get up from your seat and move it. Between tonight and tomorrow night, take that seed of 100 and sow it. Lift up your right hand. That right hand which is so blessed. That right hand which is so blessed. Jesus. Can I have those seven people get up and come and do this? Somebody do it for your son. Somebody do it for your daughter. Hmm. One day a man shocked me, Reverend Kwesin K. We were raising an offering for a building. The EAM World Headquarters. And I wanted them to sow a seed of 100,000 Ghana seeds. 100,000 Ghana seeds is about 9,000 euros, thereabout. A man came in, sat in front of me and said, Daddy, I'm going to sow 100 for myself, 100 for my wife, and we have four children, each of the children, 100,000. So our family will sow 600,000. I thought it's a joke, teacher, he did it. He did it. Those are the kind of people that are coming up in the kingdom. 
I want anybody here who has a son, a daughter, you want to sow a seed of 50, 50 euros on their behalf. Get up and come to me and pick up an envelope and go and sow it. I want somebody to remember. If God has blessed you with 10 children, take 10 envelopes. Those of you who are blessed with 10 children. The Lord has blessed me with 10 children. Look at this man. I like the way he's walking. Whoa. Wow. I want any adult here who can sow a seed of 50. Get up and come and pick up an envelope. I want everybody to pick up the envelope, then I'll let you lift up those envelopes and we'll pray. Anybody who hasn't got an envelope, come and pick it and you are sowing a seed of just 50. Do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, boy. I could almost sleep here. Somebody come on, pick up the envelope. Anybody who hasn't got the envelope, pick it up. Even if the offering is going to be 20 or 10, just pick up the envelope. Just pick up the envelope. Make sure you are holding the envelope. Even if that offering is going to be five euros, pick up the envelope. I just want you to be holding an envelope in your hand. Jesus! An offering is a part of the service. It's part of the anointing. This is holy moment. Now, listen to me. Listen. Those of you that did a pledge yesterday, can you get up and bring your offering? Lady, I wouldn't need this today. Let's pick up these envelopes. If you took an envelope from yesterday, can you bring it right now? Put it on the altar. Put it somewhere here. Somebody move those envelopes so they don't mix up. Somebody clap for them. Teacher, in our modern day, in today's world, if your member gives an offering of even 10 euros, be grateful. Because the poison they receive in their mind before they even give that offering. It means they truly love the church. They hear so much. Yeah. Anybody who took an envelope yesterday to sow a seed and you have it, can you bring it on the altar? Farina! Thank you. Hold it well. When God lean on us, every gaze is a downlying and deadline. This is holy, he says. When God, when God every gaze, every gaze is on the liar and the 
Yeshua, Amashia, Lion of Judah, Agune Jemba, Yeshua, Amashia, Lion of Judah, Agune Jemba. Lift up your offering. Lift up your envelope. The envelope you just took. Somebody give me an iPad. I have my offering in it. Somebody bring it to me. Agune Jemba. Yeshua. Amashia. Lion of Judah. Agune Jemba. Father, bless every offering, touch our lives, glorify your name. We pray your blessing on every seed sown tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Whether it is 300 or it's 100 or 50 or 20 or 10 or 5, every offering you have, even if it's 1 euro, pick it up and come and put it on the altar. Mm. Yeshua. Amashia, Lion of Judah, Agune Jemba, Yeshua, Amashia, Lion of Judah, Agune Jemba, Yeshua, Yeshua, Amashia. Lion of Judah, Agune Jemba, Yeshua, Amashia, Lion of Judah, Agune Jemba, Yeshua, Yeshua, Amashia, Lion of Judah. Agune Jemba, Yeshua, Yeshua, Amashia, Lion of Judah, Agune Jemba, Yeshua, Yeshua, Amashia, Lion of Judah, Agune Jemba. Amashia, Lion of Judah, Agune Jemba. You reign, you reign, Shen Zion King, Kato Shadow. You are mighty on your own. You reign, you reign, Shen Zion Shadow, shadow, you are mighty on your own. You reign, 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 Tomorrow is going to be a marathon. I'm starting my day tomorrow at um, 7 a.m. I'll be doing a Zoom. And the Zoom is called the set time. And I hold it for EAM partners. And for wherever I go, I do the meeting at 7 a.m. Because of the partners in that area. Okay? I don't have the link here, but... Um, some of you can get it. Some of you can get it. Um, if Apostle Jean-Pierre gets it from Peter, from William, they can share it, okay? So 7 a.m., I'll be holding that Zoom, and it's called the set time, and it's for the partners of EAM in Europe. When I'm in Ghana, I do it for the partners in Ghana, and then the rest of the world join us at 7 a.m. Ghana time. But tomorrow, I'm doing it at 7 a.m. Amsterdam time, 
because I'm in Amsterdam. And those of you that can catch that meeting at 7 is going to be awesome. This morning, I had a meeting with, um, with, the, with the Netherlands and, the, and the Europe and then um, Germany, um, Klima of EAM, and um, they can join us and it's powerful. Then when I finish, I will quickly rush to um, Winners Harvest Worship Center. Now, I have the name right now. Whenever I'm pronouncing it, they are watching me to see whether I'll remember. You know, so now I have it, you know. That name is long like a sentence. <laughs> you know, so you can see. You can easily forget which one comes first. So I'm going there early morning. Then after that, I'm coming to my main host. That is um, Pastor Teacher. So you may see me in one or two places, but I'll be everywhere. I'll be, you know, so you see me in the Zoom. Then I'll go to Winners Harvest. Then I'll come here and then come and preach. And when I finish with you, I will go back to the hotel. And at, I think, 4 p.m., 4 p.m., um, our time here, I'll be doing a Zoom again, KIA. KIA. Then in the night, I'll come back here for the anointing service. So tomorrow I'm preaching four times. Okay, four times. Four times. And uh, the Lord mightily bless you. It's going to be an awesome day tomorrow. I already told you that a church where there's revival is dead. So where there's an announcement, it's a dead church. So this shows that we are a dead church. <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, because seriously, teacher, when I got born again, I didn't need announcement. I knew where I had to be at what time because I needed it more than the pastor needed it. There's no restaurant where they make announcement. No. Tomorrow, come back. Yeah. <laughs> Even gambling center, they don't make announcement. Have you ever seen an alcohol seller where you went to buy alcohol and they told you to come back tomorrow? The following day, you yourself will be going there. What are you looking for? Alcohol. <laughs> Nobody will call you. So I pray that tomorrow God will give all of us revival. And I want to thank especially the pastors for coming. And those of them who are even supporting us online. The Lord mightily bless you. I love you. You know, I mean, we, it's such a blessing. It's such a blessing. I think this time I've done well. I'm not closing a meeting at midnight. And... Um, so teacher kept asking me, Daddy, we want to go to London and bring your books. I said, teacher, no book. Because this time I was determined. I'm coming to do a meeting, and it should be a different meeting. I, I, didn't, want, I didn't want anything like, we are selling a book. Go and find the book. It's on Amazon. Go and buy it on Amazon and read it. And if you want it, go to London, find it. Sit in a bus, travel to London. Go and buy the book. Next time, we'll be showing you I didn't want to come here and who will buy this book and somebody come and buy a book and you have to stand in front here and you have to struggle and break sweat and you talk, talk, talk. That is why all of us pastors, we are short of saliva. Every pastor is suffering from hyposalivemia. That means they have got low quantity of saliva. I go back So I just said, no book. Let me come and just do the work and go away. Anytime Prophet Brian comes to town, he'll come and do the book. Prophet Brian is not the book master in, um, in, in Amsterdam. And I want to thank those of you who have been patronizing it when my son comes here. The Lord mightily bless you. And of course, Apostle Dr. Jean-Pierre, too, that's some of it. I love you all. And God mightily bless you. Tomorrow, tomorrow, can every one of you bring at least five people? Let's jam up the whole of this place. And let's enjoy the presence of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we welcome this nice man, teacher?
Come on, let's put our hands together for the man of God. Come on. What do you want to say to him? So tomorrow, let's come and receive the anointing for the remaining months ahead of us. Invite somebody and the Lord will bless you. Let's all stand up as we are going to share the grace and fellowship. Let me welcome my good friend, Reverend Chris K, for us to hear his voice to give us a benediction. Amen. Let's all with one accord share the grace together. May the grace, the love of God, be with us now and forevermore. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Look at somebody's face and say, tomorrow I'll see you for the anointing service. And when you are coming and you want to buy your own oil, you can bring it and the man of God will bless it for you. Apostle, God bless you. Thank you so much for coming.